Hey, welcome to part 3 of my tutorial series. This time we'll be talking about part behaviours. We've seen how to attach parts together, but some parts also have behaviours that can be activated and controlled. Let's look at some examples. Parts with behaviours can be activated by pressing E. So in the case with this light here, you can see it turns on and off. And next to the name of the part, it tells you the status of its behavior. Let's look at another example. This seat has a behavior that when I hover over it and press E, I get into it. And I'm locked into position. And I can press E again when hovering over it to, to jump out. This could be useful in vehicles, for example, where you want to stay seated in the in the construction as you drive around the, the environment. So let's look at another slightly more complicated example. Here's an electric motor. I'm going to attach an axle to it. And you can see it's attached with a, a rotating attachment. And we'll attach another part as well just to show you that it's actually rotating, so I'm going to attach that rigidly to the axle. Now, as I covered in the last tutorial, sometimes you have to delete attachments to, al to allow a rotating attachment to work, because in this case, the motor and the block have attached themselves rigidly together, so I'm going to delete this attachment in between here, and now that hinge attachment is good to go. So let's unfreeze it, and now I can turn the motor on by pressing E. But nothing happens. You can hear that it's making a kind of a humming noise, but it's not spinning. Why is that? Well, because some parts uh, are controlled with um, W, A, S, and D. And the way you do that is you hold down Shift. And then I think this is configured right now to use W and S. So yeah, so when I press those, it, can, it spins in either direction. This part has a configuration dialog that lets you set up which controls you want to use to actually drive the motor. So if I hold down shift and then press E, or hold down E, it brings up the configuration dialog. And now I can switch between a few options. So I can, if I switch to directional horizontal, it'll now be controlled by, if I hold down shift, A and D. So it spins on those keys now. If I switch it over to no controls, it'll just spin indefinitely. So I just, if you, as soon as you turn it on, it'll just spin and you can wander off and it'll just keep going. And finally, you can actually reverse the direction. So you can spin it in the other way, in the other direction, and it will have the effect of flipping the controls around as well. So if it used to go left on A, it'll now go left on D and vice versa. So let's switch that off and let's have a look at another example. Actually, before I do that, oh, the sun's going down. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so let's have a look at this one. So, this is a servo motor, and this works slightly different from the regular electric motor. Now, if I hold down Shift and press Oh, I haven't switched it on yet. <laughs> if I hold down Shift and press W and S, you can now see it rotates between fixed angles. And if I hold down Shift and press E, I can bring up the configuration for this dialog. And again, I can switch it between the vertical horizon or the horizontal controls. So now it'll rotate using A and D. I can also configure it um, by reversing its direction and also changing the maximum angle that it rotates to. So if I increase this all the way up to say, well, let's go all the way up to 90 degrees, you can see now it'll rotate all the way between plus and minus 90 degrees. And you can adjust the trim angle as well to adjust where it, it's centered on. Um, that can be useful if you want to, say, set up steering on your car that you're building or something like that, and you want to adjust exactly where the steering center is and the maximum and minimum angle it steers. 
Okay, well that's it. Looks like it's getting dark, so uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time.